lecture, we are going to be looking at budgeting. And a budget is defined as a short-term formal plan to coordinate the use of different resources to achieve a preset and desired goal whilst taking the company's strategy into account. So let's look at the components in a bit more detail. First, a budget is a short-term plan. So normally when we talk about budgets, we are looking at a 12-month period. Then the budget shows us how the company is going to use the different resources that they have at their disposal to achieve their short-term goals. And whilst doing this, the company's long-term strategy must be taken into account. So although the annual budget focuses on achieving the short-term goals of the company, it must be aligned with the long-term strategic objectives of the company. Otherwise, the long-term strategic objectives will never be achieved. Now, I want you to consider this scenario. And you don't need to worry about writing everything down. Everything I discuss with you is included in the lecture notes. I want you to assume that managers A and B report to manager X, managers C and D report to manager Y, and managers X and Y report to manager Z. Now, to ensure that the budgets are aligned with the long-term strategic objectives of the company, top management must communicate the objectives and strategies to those people who are responsible for preparing budgets. Then budgets should be prepared at the lowest level of management and consolidated at higher levels. So in other words, a bottom-up approach should be followed. So manager A should prepare his or her budget and submit it to manager X for approval. Manager A and X will negotiate the budget until they both agree upon that budget. Manager B will do exactly the same thing. Prepare his or her budget and submit it to manager X for approval. They will negotiate and they will agree on the budget. Manager X should then consolidate all budgets that he or she is in control of and submit it to manager Z for approval. Once again, manager X and Z will negotiate the budget and they will come to an agreement. And exactly the same logic applies to managers C, D, and Y. So why do we follow a bottom-up approach when it comes to budget preparation? Why are budgets not just prepared by top management and then communicated throughout the organization? And the reason for this is because if targets are imposed by top management, that can be very demotivating. If you want these managers to be committed to achieving the budget targets, you then need to involve them in the budgeting process. However, you do need to be careful that the managers do not try and deliberately get approval for easily attainable budgets. The targets should be moderately difficult to achieve so that they motivate individuals to maximize their performance. However, on the other hand, they should not be impossible to achieve as this will be demotivating and have a negative impact on performance. Now, when these lower level managers are preparing their budgets, they've obviously been informed of the company's long-term strategic objectives so that they can take that into account when preparing their budget. So budgets help to ensure that everybody in the company is working towards the same common objectives. And once this is achieved, all of these individual budgets will be summarized into a master budget. And once top management has approved the master budget, that gives each of these lower level managers authority to carry out the plans that are contained in their budgets. So for example, manager A doesn't need to go and get authorization for each individual expense that's included in the master budget. Because the master budget has already been approved by top management, this manager over here can go ahead and incur any of the costs that have been approved within that budget. All right, so I've discussed those three paragraphs with you. Then it's important to note that budgeting is a continuous process. So on a monthly basis, 
the actual results should be compared with the budget and reasons for differences should be investigated. If the differences are within the control of management, corrective action should be taken to avoid similar differences occurring again in the future. All right, so let's discuss an example over here. Let's say the actual material cost is higher than budgeted. And when investigating the difference, you find that the reason is because inferior quality material was used, which resulted in excessive wastage, and the fault lies with the supplier. So because the difference is controllable, corrective action should be taken to remedy the situation. You should contact the supplier to find out the reason why inferior quality material was supplied, and if the supplier can't remedy the situation, you should find alternative suppliers. On the other hand, if the budget was unrealistic, or if the actual conditions are different from those originally anticipated when the budget was first prepared, then the budget for the remainder of the year should be adjusted. So let's say using the same example, you find that the actual material cost is higher than budgeted. But now I want you to assume that your investigation reveals that the reason why the actual cost is higher than budgeted is because the market prices for raw material have increased. So in other words, the actual conditions are different from those originally anticipated when the budget was prepared. In this case, the budget for the rest of the year should be updated to reflect the correct market price for material. Then I want you to work through the lecture example on your own, which illustrates the various different budgets. Usually the budgeting process involves taking the existing budget as the starting point for preparing the next annual budget. This is then adjusted for changes which are expected to occur during the new budget period. So expected changes in product mix, volumes and prices should be adjusted for. And this is when conventional or incremental budgeting is used. Now the problem with this is just because the existing budget includes an expense, that doesn't mean that the expense represents an efficient use of resources. So the disadvantage or the problem of using conventional or incremental budgets is that past inefficiencies, which are inherent in the current way of doing things, are carried forward into the future. So let's go through some of the criticisms of budgeting. Firstly, budgets encourage rigid planning. So if budgets and targets are set at the beginning of the financial year, the problem with that is they are not flexible and adaptive to an increasingly unpredictable and fast-changing environment. And the reality is businesses today are dealing with a very fast-changing and unpredictable environment. So obviously the budgets don't take this into account because the targets are set once off at the beginning of each year. In addition to that, they encourage incremental thinking. So this is obviously where incremental or conventional budgets are used and where the budgets are derived from last year's figures and then adjusted for the current year. And we said the problem with that is then inefficiencies that are in the existing budget are just carried forward into the future. Budgets are also extremely time-consuming. Research has found that managers dedicate approximately 30% of their time to budgets. So that's a significant percentage of their time. Budgets focus on short-term financial goals rather than key drivers of shareholder value. So managers won't want to incur costs relating to innovation, developing new products, and responding to competitors because all of these costs will have a negative impact on short-term profits. However, the problem with this is these costs are necessary for the long-term sustainability of the company. Budgets fail to encourage continuous improvement. Targets are set at the beginning of the budget period and performance that meets or exceeds these targets is deemed satisfactory. So let's say, for example, the targets are already achieved in September. 
after that point, there is no motivation for any further improvement. Employees are just going to relax because all of the targets for the year have been achieved. Achieving the target, even if it results in undesirable actions, so for example, in trying to achieve the budget target, actions could have a negative impact on people or the environment. Another criticism of budgeting is spending what is in the budget, even if it is not necessary, just to avoid next year's budget being reduced. So let's say, for example, only 80% of the training budget has been spent and it's close to the end of the financial year. Further training, which may not be necessary, may be arranged just so that the training budget for next year is not cut. Lastly, budgets are often not aligned to the strategic objectives of the organization. Now guys, the next four sections, zero-based budgeting, activity-based budgeting, rolling forecasts, and beyond budgeting. All of these sections focus on budgeting techniques that attempt to overcome the limitations of conventional budgets. Please read through these sections on your own.